so here we have the time lapse video of the Nita Hawes Nightmare blog number one cover, uh, the variant cover that I did. Uh, this series, to anybody who knows it, uh, was was particularly special for me in that I wanted to. Uh, it's the first time I've ever kind of done a, a graphic thing or a shtick kind of a thing, and I wanted to um, pay homage to Norman Rockwell with doing a series of covers that mimicked his uh, Saturday Evening Post covers. Uh, I thought, given the subject matter of horror and all that, it would be hilarious to kind of keep that Americana vibe that he was doing. So, especially in this first one, uh, you see me really very much working uh, in, in a, a very much more traditional painty fashion. I'm knocking in tonal painting and then I'm gonna start staining and stuff. Um, the idea of of uh, Nita Hawes, the character, um, she runs her business through a blog and all of that through the web. So it made sense for me to kind of give you the preview of the series and all the horrors and stuff coming out of her phone specifically. Uh, hence the blog and all that. My uh, lovely and talented wife, Nora Walcott, uh, has uh, posed for Nita for all of the covers that I did. Uh, she herself has a, a, has an affinity for um, uh, I Love Lucy and all of that. And so her expressive face and in, in working on this was always just really, really fun. Like nothing, nothing felt stiff about working on these covers. And, and all of, uh, all of this part, this is the joy of uh, making art, what you're seeing right here. For me, like the gray paintings, like the the, the ink is done, the drawing is done, the heavy lifting, you know, is put aside. And this is just rendering. Um, and if you're an artist, you know, and if you're not an artist, um, you know, this part is just like creating form and, and making things pop out. And it's, it's just truly enjoyable. Uh, people that, you know, tortured artists or whatever, that bitch and moan, like, you know, there's, there's rough times always, but this part, this, this is the joy. This is the, um, this is the fun stuff. And it's fun just to go back and see these videos now and me picking out these details. Um, it's funny that this is, uh, this was also just a huge benefit to being a digital artist in that my, my family and I were traveling at the time. And this cover specifically was um, painted, I would say about 30% of it at a Starbucks in Boston. It's so fun. I just like watching the time lapse sometimes of just filling in the areas and get, I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of edges. Uh, I, the, the soft, soft stuff, you know, like, you know, I love uh, painters like John Singer Sargent, things like that, that are really lovely rendered and things. But sometimes when things get a little fluffy and soft around the edges, it just looks too, um, too not delicate. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Um, it's probably just my heavy handed nature. It feels noncommittal on some level. I really like feeling like I could pluck the drawing out of the paper. Um, and uh, my mentor of years ago, Kent Williams, he would he would do uh, pieces, and and I and I know his my his influence of uh, edges were definitely rubbed off on me. In that, I remember making that comment to him quite a bit that some of his drawings or paintings felt like I could pluck the figure out, and it all be always became very important to me. Uh, no matter how exaggerated or unrealistic the drawing of the figure is, I really liked there being some level of believability to it. And for me, that comes in the rendering. Uh, that you can just draw the weirdest thing or whatever and then render it to make it look somewhat believable. Um, and now we're starting to, you know, doing through overlays, I believe, um, is when I start... If I were painting this, painting this, I would say this is where I start staining in color. Um, so through an overlay of kind of base color and then a layer on top of that is essentially what I'm doing here. And um, I'm looking at a photo of uh, my wife on another screen or something like that. And then, but essentially I'm just painting. Uh, I'm, yeah, that's uh, sometimes there's, there's nothing special. <laughs> I don't know what special to say about it, but um, it's just uh, push and pull. Hans, I think it was Hans uh, Burkhart is the one that kind of came up 
or popularized the term, um, the push and pull thing, but it's bringing up certain details. And sometimes those details start looking a little illustrative or a little drawn on. And so then you glaze it back. You take some other color, uh, like the greens that you see in her shoulder, you take some other color and kind of smack those lines back by putting a little glaze on it. And then you'll go back into that and uh and pluck out some highlights and see which one you know but again it's just a long explanation of saying push and pull usually uh like you see with the green uh or the the kind of gray tones that i'm slapping over the reds it's just to knock some of those details back so then i can so then other things can be brought up uh it's just a, just other tricks and ways to show uh or to convey depth yeah, sometimes in these videos, it feels like it's uh, it's stalled out a little bit. But essentially, then I, I start looking for what tiny, tiny little area that I got stuck on and that I'm noodling. And you can definitely see all these little tentacles just taking all the time in the world. But I really, I really wanted uh, to do something special for Nita Haas. It was, this would be uh, my first series that I co-created with Rodney Barnes that that I didn't draw uh, all of the interior stuff. I did all of the concept design for the characters uh, and, uh, and a lot of the settings. But um, so I really, I wanted to, I don't know, I really wanted the, the, the visuals that I did put on it. Um, I really wanted to knock it out of the park. And honestly, I, I just think it's a special book uh, and I wanted to do my best work. And then my studio mate, uh, uh, and best friend Sherard Jackson uh, helped and did the uh, the Nita Haas logo to mimic the Saturday Evening Post, um, and then all of a sudden it looked like you know a demonic version of that magazine, and it was great. So there you go. This is I know I'm still twiddling around. Like also one of the things that uh, made me very happy in this was to add little things that I take out. I take out some things because it makes it too specific, um, you know, based on the character. But this one, things like her bracelet and her watch, you know, and all that, like, I think those are just great little details to have included. Uh, so there you go. There's a lot of the thinking behind uh, this first cover. Thanks.